All right, so we got an awesome surprise here this morning. Marlene spotted this and then gave me the heads up. So we've got our Brazilian rainbow boas here. And mommy has just given birth to a whole lot of babies. They're all over the place. There's a couple at the back there as well. So we're gonna actually start taking them out. And I'm sure they'll all be very fine and chill. This is dad over here. You can see why they're called rainbow bows with that beautiful shine and sheen that comes off of the skin, reflecting the natural spectrum of light. Obviously little babies are a little more dull, but um, they get those red colors as they get older. So you get a lot of the reddish, nice red ones when you get sort of brownish colored ones. Um, these adults are sort of mid-range of how pretty they can be. Really stunning snakes. So we're just going to take the little babies out and uh, pop them in their new environment soon. But we, for now we've just got a fornarium with uh, quite a bit of water in it. So that they can just sort of wash and clean themselves off. And then we'll house them separately. Alright, so there's dad, he's very chilled. And here's mom just lying down over here. Now this enclosure is a little bit maybe on the small side for them. They live together all year round and they breed every single year for us so far since they've been adults. Um, last time I think we got about 14 or so babies. Um, we just keep them with a heat emitter. So that's a ceramic heat emitter that gives off nice heat no light whatsoever because i've actually found a lot of the time that um, nocturnal species uh, mostly i found out with uh, emerald tree boa and gargoyle geckos that they were not active at night at all with an infrared light and as soon as i switched to a uh, heat emitter they were all over the place i'm talking within 15 minutes they were actually out and about and doing their thing so that's why we prefer heat emitters Heat emitter also just gives off heat, and nice, makes a nice hot pocket over here. Um, it doesn't dry out the air as much as a UV, um, sorry, as an infrared light does. Okay, we just gotta make sure we don't miss all these little ones that are trying to get out now. There's a couple up in the tree over there. So we keep them at about 28, 28.5 degrees. Oh, cute little dudes. And um, the, as I said, they've been doing very, very well for us. They like the sort of cooler range. You don't give them much of a high hot spot like we do with some other pythons and boas, um, which would like maybe say 32 degrees. You find the rainbow boas like the sort of cooler end. They're just such a stunning snake. They're really, really beautiful animals. All right. So. Who are we doing? Well, there's one coming out over my lap here already. Come on, buddy. You stay in there. Maybe I'll just keep this door closed between offloading. And uh, we'll do a final count later. There's also, there's some at the back there. I want to actually get some really nice photos of them. Very, very cool snakes. And we're just keeping them, as you can see, this is just peat. It's a little bit on the dry end. The moisture is further down. Just fine peat, that's all. And I mean, you can see the condition of these animals. They're in absolutely perfect condition. Nice, healthy skin tone and everything. Eat like champs. Obviously, mom's a little bit skinny now. We've got to fatten her up. And I see that they have sort of pulled all the plants and everything down all over the place. All right. Okay, so it's just a whole little trick of grabbing at these babies. Come on, buddy. Now with keeping um, snakes like this, which need that high humidity, you want to go with a waterproof cage. And you guys might see that these cages are wood. Uh, we have coated them with fiberglass resin. So they are fully waterproof. Um, these have been here for about six years or so. Um, this particular cage doesn't have the, um, the uh, clay balls and lacquer at the bottom. We just make keep it damp all the time. You can see it's a little more damp at the bottom there, but obviously they haven't been misting here enough. Um, but you can see the condition of the wood there. It's absolutely perfect. So this pool coat works really well. Much better than varnishing and things like that. 
because some of our cages are varnished. Hey, oh, that's a little fighter right there. A little nippy chap. The nippy ones tend to be the, the best feeders in the end anyway. And um, yeah, our last batch of these babies, they uh, all ate on my first feeding and they pretty much hadn't stopped since then, I'm sure. They all did really, really well. But it's quite funny how you can get one batch of animals from this, even the same parents. The one batch will be no problem at all feeding, eating like champions, and then the next batch can be as little problem animals. But they all eventually start eating in their own time. Dad just wants out of here. He doesn't want his to deal with the kids anymore. It's too much. All right. Now. Okay, so here's a little guy over here. Oh, that one's super slimy. He's just come out of his little embryotic sac. So, I mean, the, the little bags that they hatch out of is literally just uh, the egg. It's without a shell, it's just got that membrane because the eggs are incubated internally rather than externally like your pythons and other species. So around about 30% of reptiles give birth to live young. It's just that the eggs are incubated internally rather than externally. Really cool. Okay, here's another little guy. Ah, also a little biter. Got some good little teeth on them for being so small. And the others are quite chilled. So you see, each one has his own little personality. Very cool. Okay, Dad's just, maybe Dad's wondering, hey, what are you doing with my kids? He's checking out here, why are they leaving here? You can't join them, buddy. All right, oh, it's tangled there. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle to get the ones up there. But we're going to get a couple of these guys out and then uh, get a couple photos and we'll do a little count once we have sure we got them all. Because I'm going to need two hands to get all this stuff out. This is leaning on there. I don't want anything to shift and potentially crush a baby. As you can see, there's, I don't know if you can see, there's a little baby down there between these two pieces. So this is a two-handed job. And with holding the camera, I can't actually do that now. Cool, but let's, uh, I don't know if we can see them all in the little bag there. Okay, so here's a, here's a better look at mom. She's looking a little bit skinny now. Obviously after dropping all her babies. And you can see this is ex exactly where it all happened. Obviously she popped them all out in one go. And you can see this little baby is the last one still somewhat in the bag and you can see little blood vessels and everything from the other the other babies so 100 percent live that bunch of babies no slugs no stillborns so obviously stillborns are ones that are come out dead and the slugs would be infertile eggs that come out these like little orange lumps okay so very very good well done mom and dad but then just look at that sheen, that color on them. Beautiful, beautiful snakes. So, I mean, these are like average adults. They can get a bit larger, depending on how much you feed them. <clears throat> we don't, as I say, we don't have much space. That's why they're in a cage like this and they just kept fed nice, happy and healthy. You don't have to grow them all to their full potential. And you can still have really good babies that come out at the end of the day. So it's the same as with some of our retics. We uh, actually keep them at a moderate size. You can see here's a little bit of the egg sac, the yolk there that this one's still absorbing a little bit of. So we'll just keep this one on moist paper until that is fully absorbed and just falls off. Super cool. Alright, so then we just need to do a final count of how many babies we've got here. So there you can see where it's attached to the umbilical. Alright. So we're going to do the count of how many we've got here. That's two, four, whoa, five, six, 
five, six. Oh my word. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ah, eleven, well, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Yeah, so apparently last year Marlene just told me that we actually had 18 babies, so just two shorter this time, but so stoked to have a whole bunch of healthy babies. Very cool. Now, as I mentioned, we do house up adults together all year round. Um, that's not always advisable for snakes, because sometimes, you know, some won't want to eat, feel threatened by the other one. So it's really a sort of species dependent thing and also personality, whether the snakes are happy living with one another. So I mean, these guys have been happy living with one another. They always eat very well. And as you can see, they get everything right. So don't always keep um, snakes together. They are solitary animals. So sometimes it's best to have them individually. But as I say, these guys do just fine being together. Cool, so that's our Brazilian rainbow boas.